Hey, this is Clown from Slipknot. You're watching. <laughs> Keep going, man. There you go. Where you at? Huh? See, I got you. You're watching Mob Line. What's up, everyone? This is Loudwire's coverage of the 2012 Heavy MTL Fest. And as you can see right here, I'm sitting with Clown from Slipknot. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, so I actually recently saw you guys for the first time on Mayhem Fest, a long time coming. And uh, I hear a lot of people say that you have a very animalistic performance. And for me, the visual that kept coming up was that of a, of a parasite. Like you guys kind of storm the stage, uh, you know, visions of like you guys are drooling, you know, like oozing pus, pissing blood, and you have this amazing control over the audience. Uh, how would you describe your, your personal uh, stage show? I like that. I've never heard that before, but that's kind of, uh, I think that is kind of the basis of it and where we're at and what we do with everyone that's here. It is kind of the way we look at it. Like, you can exist, but we're going to take over. And that's not any disrespect because I respect all art. But if I'm involved and I'm donating my time away from my family and my other life, then it's your ass. You know what I mean? So I, I like that a lot. Um, you know, it's also a car wreck. You know, the whole thing is slow motion. So even though it's an hour and a half, it's a car spinning out of control for an hour and a half and then coming to a dead stop. And I know this because when I get off a bus later, the way I feel, it's like coming out of the hospital and knowing that you hit something dead on, straight. And I don't know, we get up, we get in a lot of car wrecks. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that Mayhem Fest, it's a great tour. You're coming right out of that, right into uh, Heavy TO and Heavy MTL. How was the show last night in uh, Toronto? It was good. We liked it. It was uh, a lot colder there than it is here, so I'm a little extra angry today. I feel like I'm swimming. And when you're on stage, it's like huffing water, and that is no fun. Uh, but it was great. You know, we love Canada. Um, you know, the kids are always great because they have to wait a long time for us to get up here. Uh, so you can see that hunger and that urgency, you know, and that's always that's awesome, you know. Um, we want to get up here, I don't know, you know, we'll ride a tour cycle maybe, maybe a couple times, you know. I mean, we'll do Canada proper, hit all the major um, areas, <clears throat> and then we're lucky to come back up, you know. So it was awesome last night. Um, we're going to go for it hard tonight because we're out of here, back to the States, and we have two shows left, and then we're going to be off for a while. So these three... Yeah, this is the last show, really, of our touring cycle is tonight, you know. So we're going to go extra hard. And then the last two shows are not fest, so that's a whole different thing and mindset. There'll be other songs that we're going to do since it's our festival. Uh, so tonight's on because this is literally the last show. You know, Mayhem to tonight, it's all kind of one big concept, you know. So tonight, last show of the tour, pretty much. And you know, you're speaking about Nod Fest, which is uh, obviously your personal festival that you guys have really created from the beginning. And uh, how, what do you visualize when it comes to your performance at that show? Because the entire thing is going to be very carnival based, a very dark vibe, uh, and it's om I feel like it's almost going to be like your stage show spread out in the entire. Uh, crowd and the entire festival grounds. Is that what people can expect? Yeah, it, that's basically what it is. You know, that's the mindset behind it is to bring our thoughts to an entire festival sitting. So if you're not scared walking in the door, then I've already failed. But uh, you're getting squirted with a scent the minute you walk in. And it's like you walk in and you got a scent on you all day. You're going to smell like Slipknot. It's going to be everywhere. You're going to leave. You're going to be hanging out with your parents fishing or some crap. And you're going to be like, 
It smells like Slipknot. And that's the point, man. It's like that parasite you were talking about. So it's going to be one big disease. Uh, lots of fire. It's not a circus. Carnival is good. It's not a circus because there's no fucking elephants. And uh, carnival, it's more of a ritual, you know. Lots of fire. Lots of just fear. Uh, it's going to be fun, you know. We're playing with like-minded people that are our friends and some other new friends, and I think it's danger from the beginning into the end. And it's awesome to be able to give the fans a whole day of something we put together musically, you know, and then the rest of it, you know. So pretty excited, you know, pretty excited. i got to go back and... I'm going to dig out all this crap of ours and take it to our museum that we're putting, putting in. And that's good. People don't even understand what it's going to take to do that, just to go through crap that's rusted and needs to be taken to a junkyard, but I hold on to it, you know, for these reasons, for these exact reasons right here. Yeah, and you're saying that, you know, tonight, is the final show of this current touring cycle and you're gonna give it everything you have just like you do every night but on the last night there's always something very special about that and I want to know when you're at the last song when you hit the last note of the last song what's going through your mind when you're like this is it you know am I gonna go through the border <laughs> no 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 it's not it's funny but it's not <laughs> um, you know, there, I think since the beginning of our career, we always, we always have a sense of sadness, you know. Um, but but the sadness is that the whole time we've been working to get to the end because of how brutal we are. But then you get to the end and there's like a revelation, you know. We're like, we did it again. We made it. Everybody's still here. You know, a few bad things have happened here and there, blah, 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 a lot of pain, you know, but uh, it's sad to go because we, we always say, oh, I could do this for another 10 weeks. So that's the first thing that starts coming out. Uh, but at the same time, we're really relieved for being able to get through uh, another thing. And, you know, it's just another notch in the knots history. You know, we can say, hey. We did this, you know, we can look back. So it's just a, tonight's another great ending, you know, and another thing to look back on. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, another very, very important thing about Not Fest is that uh, you guys have got Lamb of God. And this is going to be Randy's uh, first show back, uh, you know, from his incarceration. That's got to be an, an incredibly rewarding uh, thing to have him on your tour. and for him to return to the stage. Well, just so everybody knows, I mean, you know, we had Lamb of God on before everything happened, and there's no way we we're going to have them replaced until we were told um, by, you know, their camp that there was no way they could do it. But in our hearts, we stayed with it the whole time because we just, I always felt that, he would be back, you know, I just felt in my, in my spirit, and we're just thankful, most importantly, that he's back with the people that he loves, his families, his, you know, immediate family, and his other family, his band, and that's all we really care about, is that he's back safe, and that he's, you know, returned to his loved ones, and, and, and has a moment, and we're extremely honored to have him back, you know, but he's, they're family, you know, they're friends, so, you know, it's what it was meant to be, you know, and that's why they've stayed on the bill the whole time. It's like, they're going to be there. You know, we didn't know it was going to be his first, you know, back performance, you know. So we're, we're honored to have that, and I just think it's great for the kids, or the fans, I should say, you know, of all ages. I think it's great for them, you know. And I'm not the kind of guy that's going to walk up to Randy and go, hey, give me the whole story. You know, I'm going to give him a hug and tell him glad that he's back and if he wants to talk about it we can talk about it but otherwise he's just getting a big old hug from Papa Clown. Yeah. 
I wanted to get your uh, your take on that whole situation because, uh, I mean, that's something that could potentially happen to a Slipknot show, especially with all your, your pyro and fire and everything. If someone managed to get on stage, it could be very uh, bad. <laughs> well, first thing I thought about is all the crap I did in 98 and 99. <laughs> And then 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and now 2012. I thought, uh-oh, this is bad. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to tell you my secrets, but I've laid in my bunk, and I figured out how to know if that's coming before it comes. It's very simple. You just have to have people that fucking understand and take you seriously. And that's scary. Because uh, it can happen to anyone. And I don't know what's going on. You hear a million things. You know, Randy's going to have to talk about it and set the story straight. But, you know, we've all heard a million things. I've heard a couple things, and it goes pretty deep. Um, you know, I don't know, man. Art's art. If you believe in it, you do it, and you go for it. So, but uh, pretty frightening, you know. You know, a little, a little scary. You know, they should just say don't come. You know, be like no problem, not going. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Kind of a, I don't know. You know, man. But uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully we quit talking about this. Yeah, hopefully it won't be an issue for much longer. Uh, uh, you've just released uh, Slipknot's uh, Wear the Mask app. Uh, can you tell fans uh, what they can expect from that? Uh, very confusing, hard app that you have to try and figure out because everything is, isn't is very challenging. So it's a little bit challenging. I'm probably, I've heard this frustrating, but I made it like that for a reason. And... You know, lots of people get through it. Some people are like, what the hell? But um, it was purposely made to be challenging with a knot. You know, I'm not going to hand it to you and um, figure it out, you know. So it's only beginning with that, too. So, you know, it's basically make a mask, you know. And it's very arty around that, I think, you know. And then, you know, you get to make your very own slip knot. Uh, it's pretty cool because, like, Chris Fame, he's already got his own band. And, you know, there's eight other guys in his band that don't even know he's Chris Fame, and that's kind of the point behind it, you know. So other people want to look at it as conceptual and arty. It's, it's up to them, but, you know, I think it's a lot better than squashing chickens or some crap for about five days and then trying to figure out what else you want to buy. So we're going to keep... You know, probably have to make it a little bit easier. I don't know. But uh, it's Slipknot. Wear the mask or don't. Uh, and I recently heard you say that once uh, once you finally uh, hang up the mask that you wanted uh, your son to take your spot in the band. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what what's his reaction to that statement? Is he, is he up for the challenge? First of all, I come from my family. And my son's a set cop up on Slipknot stage. So he pulls the number two banner over every night. You know, and Paul used to live at my house and run my bar with me that we got signed in. And, uh, you know, so he's, you know, he's a little kid on the stairs at two, three years of age in a diaper playing drumsticks. And, uh, I'd have to tell him to go up to bed because we were cussing so much, and he'd sneak back down. And you know, it's just a statement. You know, I'm, you know, it's a statement. But if I ever were to go, you know, I'd want to keep it so now. It's not like if I win, I'd want them to stop or it had to stop. You know, so now it's always something that is um, true in nature, and as long as it's true. Um, you know, what for me the reason why I've said that is there would be no greater big honor than, you know, being able to leave and have your son who is a drummer 
and knows your stuff inside and out, be able to take your place. I mean, that sounds like slipped out to me. I don't plan on going anywhere for a long time, as long as it's still fun up there and I'm not held in some country or something. Um, and I'm going to be doing it, so it's good. I've heard, uh, I believe it was Corey who was talking recently about the difficulties of returning to touring after, uh, after Paul passed away. Um, and, but you guys have succeeded very much in that. Um, I was wondering if that same difficulty exists uh, when it comes to the studio and how you guys are going to be able to get past that and become successful once again in that endeavor. Well, as we all know, Paul, a major writing force in the band. Um, we've been sporadically touring for two years to share the grieving process with our fans instead of doing it by ourselves and having them do it by themselves. We're doing it together. And that's why we're here tonight, you know. Um, we got to do all of Europe last year. We've done Australia, one night at Rock and Roll in South America, just toward the States, Canada a couple of dates, and then ending it with Not Fest with a little fun, something that Paul even had been a part of talking about in the past. And, uh, you know, we're going to take some time off because we still, even though it's been over two years, you know, we got to be able to go into the studio, calm, cool, and collect it. Uh, because I'm not ready to walk into a studio and not see him. I just, I can't do it. I just, I won't be able to, I won't be able to play, I won't be able to think, I won't be able to hold my emotions. And I need to be able to, I need to be able to go in there and be able to do what we do with him in mind. You know, being able to go, he'd want it this way. Because he's, he's right here with us, right now, just because we're talking about him. And... That's what, where we need to be. Some guys are ready right now. Some guys aren't. You know what I mean? And when we all are, that's when, you know, we'll go in there and, you know, all the core writers, you know, they'll know. They'll stop for a minute and they'll be like, you know, we're just not the kind of band that just, well, go in there and take it, you know, we'll, we'll literally think, like, you know, would he like this? You know, what would his spin be on? Because he taught us a lot. So we're able to look at it like that. We're able to still give him some some love and say, boom, you know, he might have done this, and then add it, you know. So it's going to be a minute, but it's going to happen, you know. We're going to take a little time off. Corey and Jim are going to go do their things as other people are going to go do their things, and we're going to come back, write a record, record a record, um, prepare a tour, go out on tour, drop a record, and then support a record. That's our plans. All right. And, uh, and last thing, you guys have got uh, Antenna, Antennas to Hell now, which is uh, a great compilation record with a lot of uh, new stuff that fans have never uh, heard before. Uh, what's your favorite part of that whole compilation, personally? Uh, first of all, I hate all that crap. I'm just saying, compilation, best of. Uh, did you call it compilation because you know I don't like greatest hits? Uh, huh? You said compilation. That, yeah, no, that's acceptable. That's acceptable. I hate greatest hits, best of. Compilation's the best I'll give anybody. But we had a lot of support um, from the label. They were on page with us, and they usually are. But we got to, you know, the, the way the songs, we picked the track listing. So that gives the fans a different perspective. You know, not even a machine could pick the way those songs are put in. So it gives you a different listening experience right there. Makes it its own piece of art. Second of all, we got to put art in it. I got to make a booklet. It took me two months to make the album cover. Um, there's all kinds of hidden shit in there. So we got to have a booklet, a proper art. You know, not just this one sleeve best of, crap, pay me, no. We, everybody came together, and you know, there's a one CD, a two CD, and a three CD. Uh, the second CD is, I believe, 2009 Download Festival. Um, I couldn't even tell you, you know, really, to be honest with you. But there's a 2009 Download uh, CD, and it's 2012, so you get something random. And then the third CD is all these, not, 
they're remixes, but they're really elements of two songs on the on the compilation. So take two songs, mix elements, and write when you want, you know, because it's so bad, and you're just like, you want to sing something again and again and again, like the song, but I just do it once, and you're like, what the hell? And I just take elements of two songs and stick them together, what I felt, and threw a montage of video on it, which does not go with the music. But when it connects, you're like, ugh something weird happens. And the more you watch it, the more you understand those elements. They're not trying to be new songs. They're not trying to be new songs. They're just, they're, they're just elements, you know? I would never perpetrate, you know, someone trying to redo a song. Those, those songs are God to us, first and foremost, and God to the kids. Just a little different artistic, you know, trying some new stuff, you know, keeping it moving. So. I'm just proud that the kids get a full journey, you know what I mean? You know, so we don't look like some dude in his 70s up on a, on a uh, infomercial at 2 o'clock in the morning where some label's just milking the song. It's like, do you remember this song from the thing? And they play like 30 seconds, and I look like a total douchebag. I can't handle any of that crap. However, I'm very proud of it. Um, you know, it's cool. It's another piece of art in our life. And there really wasn't any problems making it. it. Just it went smooth, you know. I spent two months making the album cover, just making that thing, and that's what that's what's all about, you know. We made it's taken up to twelve years for albums to make that, you know. So that's cool, you know. I, I like it. Kids seem to like it. Fans, I keep saying kids like kids only come to our show. It's fans. I'm trying to get that in my head. Fans, fans, fans. But the fans seem to like it, and like I said, it's a package, as it should be. Because if it was an insert or whatever, it wouldn't be coming out. But uh, Antonio's to hell. Get ready for your roller coaster. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You Grab it. Uh, shouldn't have shaken my hand. Now you have the parasite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Okay. Grab Antonio's to hell and get ready for the next step because it is coming. Slipknot. <laughs> 